Hi, welcome to the introduction to AI and applications. Welcome to Expert Technologies. So basically, I am your trainer and I am Chandrasekhar Dasari. So I did my bachelor's from NIT Surat and master's from IIC Bangalore in Aerospace Engineering. Then I did my doctoral studies in uh, Southampton University. So basically, I'm current. Uh, I'm working as a uh, consultant in one of the data science and machine learning companies in Hyderabad. So today, in our topic of discussion uh, regarding the introduction to AI and applications, we will have a quick tour on AI and applications and some of the intelligent systems. So in the introduction part, we will be discussing about the introduction to AI use cases in AI and machine learning, what is data understanding uh, and one of the case studies we will be discussing about. So in the introduction to AI and use cases, uh, which are basically the first and the second topic, uh, we will have a brief view of AI, the history of AI and history like timeline of AI, uh, the progressive timeline of AI. And what are the toolkits which are used in the AI uh, studies? And uh, what is the major difference uh, between humans and machines uh, and uh, the learning pattern and uh, the different perspectives of human intelligence and machine intelligence? And in the last part, we will look at some of the applications of AI by major companies such as Facebook and Amazon and some of the products they have uh, developed over the period of time and what is how they are uh, uh, unique and uh, how they function so those sort of aspects we will be looking at so coming back to the ai and ml and deep learning artificial intelligence is basically the ability of a machine to perform cognitive functions we associate with human minds such as perceiving reasoning learning and problem solving Exa examples of uh, technologies that enable ai uh, to solve business problems include robotics autonomous vehicles computer vision language virtual agents and machine learning and machine learning is basically a subset of artificial intelligence here the algorithms basically they detect the patterns and they will learn how to make predictions and recommendations by processing data and experience rather than explicit programming so the al algorithms also adapt in response to new data and experiences to improve the efficacy over time so basically the ml algorithms they evolve over a period of time with the amount of data they have been analyzing and with the new data and new patterns they are uh, able to find in the large databases so they will be able to evolve over a period of time so that's why all these most of the companies are into this data collection so right now they are analyzing a lot of data which is their historical data and based on that they are uh, making a lot of progress in uh, in their um, yeah, in the like uh, streamlining the algorithms according to the customer needs uh, and according to the uh, profits you know so these sort of things are happening so when it comes to deep learning, deep learning is basically a subset of machine learning in which each tasks are broken down and distributed onto machine learning algorithms that are organized in consecutive layers. So each layer builds upon the output of the from the previous layer. Together the layers constitute an artificial neural network and uh, basically the artificial neural network mimics the approach, distributed approach of problem solving carried out by neurons in a human brain. So as you can see in the right side of the screen, we we present a small uh, neural network with three hidden layers, and uh, these kind of networks are frequently used in uh, deep learning studies. So here different features are collected at different levels. Like in this case, the image pixel data is fed to the first layer, and it reads the edges, then contours and corners, and then object parts. And finally, after processing the data, the identity of the object is given as an output whether it's a car or a person or animal so these sort of uh, different layers hidden layers and at each lay each level uh, different uh, features have, are being read and fed into the network and um, so yeah i mean there is a fundamental this is the these are the main fundamental differences between ai machine learning and deep learning okay 
so how the future ex extraction is different in uh, deep learning and machine learning so basically uh, to understand the further difference between ml and uh, dl so as we see on the screen if an image uh, if a input image of a car is being fed then manually the features are collected and fed to any ml algorithm so in this case it will be a classification algorithm uh, a classification type algorithm ml algorithm and the output of output will be whether it's a car or not a car but whereas in deep learning the future extraction as well as classification is done in tandem by feeding the input to dl uh, deep learning neural network and the output is given as car or not so in machine learning basically uh, human intervention is needed for the future extraction and uh, human uh, intervention is needed for uh, specifying which algorithm should be used and uh, so these sort of details should be fed into the system rather than in deep learning so everything is automatically uh, taken into account and uh, we will be getting the output whether it's a car or not a car so by the end of this module ai module we will be able to confidently say how it is being done and what are the different processes and how the things are uh, uh, different when it comes to machine learning and deep learning so these aspects we will be having a very close view so before uh, thinking that far we let us have some brief uh, view on the machine learning capabilities some of the machine learning capabilities machine learning or ai capabilities are face recognition spam filter customer segmentation recommendation system house price estimation identifying handwritten characters fraud detection loan application so most of the progress of the recent uh, um, i mean most of the recent progress in machine learning involves mapping from a set of inputs to set of outputs which is like basically proposed by two pioneers tom mitchell and uh, michael jordan so basically what uh, what is saying what it's it means is uh, so most of the machine learning algorithm it's all based on the amount of input data and the output which we are seeking for so in the case of face recognition we want to know who the person on this photo is when it comes to spam filter a lot of machine learning algorithms um, like some of the machine learning algorithms they will be able to segregate whether it's a spam or uh, not a spam so one can personalize the emails also and industry they may receive a lot of emails so the algorithm should be able to identify which is a spam email and which is not a spam email because it should be done with a lot of accuracy because sometimes if it detects a, a mail which is a which is not a spam which is a genuine mail so they might lose the business so in this way uh, the algorithm should be very effective in dealing with this uh, uh, um, uh, like spam filter uh, providing the spam filter uh, customer segmentation so this is one of the major um, uh, area in which you know the customers are being segregated into different types different levels based on psychographic analysis or be based on the spending patterns based on how um, the how much time they come to the retail store so this is done across different fields like in airlines or in retail industry or in banking industry so across this sector the customers are being segregated into different uh, uh, different uh, genres and they are being targeted uh, whenever we want to endorse a new product so since they are uh, already customers for us so they generally provide these advertisements uh, specific advertisements to them so this is how they do the business and not only on this one so the, if uh, genuinely if a person want uh, if any person want to apply for a loan so uh, like they will be collecting lot of information about the uh, about the customers and they will be segregating them according to how much income level they are how much they can uh, get the so not only in uh, banking sector it can also be in the retail industry where they can they collect the data about the customer how much time the customer comes what is the spending pattern of the customer and how much uh, uh, frequency of visits they have been performing so this sort of uh, analysis will help us to increase the sales and increase to endorse new products based on the customer needs so there is another uh, field like recommendation system uh, where you know uh, you can see the uh, latest platforms like spotify netflix amazon 
uh, Flipkart. So these sort of uh, websites generally they endorse their products, new products based on the customer history pattern, purchase pattern. So basically, if someone is interested in buying uh, uh, shoes, so and they already bought a shoes, bought uh, a couple of shoes in the previous, uh, so they will be endorsing this product to them through whether through email or through um through uh, like w whenever they visit the customer visit the website they will be suggesting so this sort of recommendation system helps us uh, helps the uh, helps them to uh, to endorse the product based on the needs of the customer house price estimation which is basically there are a lot of companies right away uh, right now which are actually into this uh, a real estate uh, machine learning uh, using uh, machine learning for real estate so where these algorithms uh, they will be able to identify the right uh, house at right price and they will be able to endorse this uh, house for the uh, consumers so basically there will be lot of houses on the market so we never know what is the right price of the house so if someone wants to buy a house the price might be changing for a house which is nearby to the um, uh, to the nearest metro station and it will be the same way it will be very far away i mean as the house is far away from the commute it will be having a different price and based on the number of bathrooms based on the number of area of the uh, house and uh, number of the bedrooms in the house so all these things matters when it comes to house price estimation and based on the area uh, in which the house is located so how one can take into account all this information and can guess with the right price and they can uh, they can uh, project this price to the uh, consumer so how you can do that with a very short uh, span of time so th this is the this is where uh, machine learning comes into picture and machine learning algorithms will be able to segregate and they will be able to help the co consumer to make right decisions and we know the fraud detection in the bank transactions there so there will be a lot of fishy going fishy transactions which are going on so whenever we uh, we manually one cannot detect this because this transaction uh, duration will be very less so there there should be uh, well-defined machine learning algorithms which will be able to detect these sort of fraud, fraud transactions and they should be able to stop this and they should be able to identify this and there is another thing like loan application in which you know there there will be a lot of uh, people who will be uh, applying for a loan for per day they will be getting a lot of loan applications so a company can't take manually a lot of time to process all these applications so the loan application time and loan application process uh, it should be instantaneous and it should it can't be manually feasible as earlier it used to happen so nowadays everything is automated and digitized so that applicant whenever he apply he gives all the details about his um, background like his income and his company and the number of this family uh, his credit history so all this information it will be right away processed by the uh, by the banks and they will be able to give the feedback whether it is accepted or rejected so this is only possible you because of the machine learning algorithms because uh, they will be able to fetch the data from different bureaus and they will be able to analyze and they will be able to give uh, recommendations for the bank whether it should be accepted or rejected so these sort of many fields are having a um, uh, lot of influence because of this machine learning algorithms so there is another field like identifying handwritten characters like uh, optimal character recognition where a lot of documents which are like handwritten or um, bank documents or um, legal documents which are there uh, available so everything wa people wants to digitize them so there are a lot of complexities involved because um, not much of the documents will be in uh, english or uh, uh, any popular language but in the own uh, local language also there might be some documents so in order to digitize them how you will recognize the characters you know and the characters might be uh, looking uh, like the similarity there will be a similar characters but it is very hard to rec to recognize those characters so there are a lot of complexities involved so how we can design the algorithm so that 
you know they will be able to identify these characters and they will be able to digitize these documents which are available so these sort of complexities are involved in that and um, so this is where ml uh, truly shines uh, and uh, it has a lot of applications so this is a brief uh, timeline uh, in artificial intelligence so around 1950 alan turing uh, he proposes this turing test for intelligence and rosenblatt he designs the first neural network in 1952 uh, arthur samuel wrote the first computer learning algorithm John McCarthy actually coined the term uh, artificial intelligence in 1955. So in 1966, we can see a failure of a machine translation. Uh, in 1987, there is a collapse of the Lisp machine market. And in 1973, there is a reduction of funding in the UK in response to the Light Hill report. And DARPA in US also cuts back funding for AI research. And DARPA's frustration with the speech understanding research program at uh, CMU like 1975 abandonment of uh, uh, so there is a lot of uh, uh, lot of apprehension towards this uh, AI research and uh, the, there is not much funding uh, so you can see 1988 also there is a cancellation of new spending on AI in 1990 the expert systems reaching the bottom so people started uh, um, automating the systems like writing a rule based uh, uh, explicit programming for the systems but rather than very little work is done in AI research where you know people uh, people are not much interested in uh, using this uh, machine intelligence a uh, human in, uh, like machine intelligence incorporating the machine intelligence into the humans so so in 2000 um, so early stages of 2000 like 2005 2003 to 2005 so th there, is, there is a first paper on computer vision and because of some research which happened in vision so people started understanding what is the importance of ai and in this way the ai has picked up its speed and now you can see every now and then every couple of uh, um, months you know you find a new neural network which is on the literature front and a lot of additions are being done lot of applications are being de developed using these neural networks so there is a lot of optimism right away uh, using these neural networks so what is the main reason for the uh, AI um, like uh, the, the advancements in the AI so the, there are three main reasons one is advances in algorithms uh, the other one is computing power and the data so let us uh, look at uh, each topic uh, uh, and uh, we will have a brief uh, view on the uh, uh, each each topic so basically in uh, data so we find there is unreasonable and effectiveness of data and we find a lot of big data and a lot of cost effective data storage and realization of the data um, uh, will give you a lot of insights. So people started understanding that uh, the data is having a lot of implication and they started collecting this data and analyzing this data. So in this context, uh, there will there is a lot of progress in big data analytics and a uh, lot of new platforms are being uh, learned and applied. Uh, so there is another second reason uh, because of which there is a development in AI that is like uh, uh, fast processors and parallel processing, computing clusters and cloud computing. And uh, so with the rise of GPU, GPU computing also it is possible to train uh, deep learning neural networks. So even um, because of the development in the hardware we find lot of advancements. The other one is because of the advance in the algorithms of the toolkits. So there is a lot of research which is going on in developing these deep learning algorithms. And um, so a lot of companies also have invested heavily in, um, in this AI research. And uh, artificial neural networks are probably one of the most impressive um, methods which are currently um, like there is a lot of uh, buzz around that and uh, this highly optimized libraries are used uh, and these most of them are open source libraries uh, like numpy tensorflow keras 
uh, scikit-learn. So a lot of these libraries, Python libraries, which are available, uh, and so some of them are uh, uh, really helpful in uh, developing your own neural network, and you can work through them. So because of this open source um, libraries and uh, advancement in algorithms, so a lot of research is also being done in uh, artificial intelligence. So what are the toolkits which are used? So these are the famous tools kits uh, commonly used by most of the users in AI. TensorFlow, Keras, Tiano, PyTorch, MXNet, Cafe, Chainer, Cafe2, uh, Torch. So each having its own usage and its own specific application. So as you see in TensorFlow is basically the most popular deep learning framework today. And it is used by Gmail, Uber, Airbnb, Nvidia and lot of other brands. Keras is a machine learning framework and uh, it has a lot of data and deep learning. It is the most minimalist approach to using TensorFlow, Tiano or CNTK and it has high level Keras shell. Tiano supports computational optimizations and compilations. Uh, compilation. Its Python package is built for uh, computational graphs. So Py uh, PyTorch framework was developed for Facebook services but it is used for its own tasks by companies like Twitter and Salesforce. It's a high, so MXNet is a highly scalable deep learning tool that can be used on wide variety of devices. MXNet um, growth is likely boosted by becoming an Apache project. So you can see a lot of um, these uh, tools which are being used. Uh, so these are like in the project framework when you are using MX, like a lot of interface between these uh, uh, these platforms. So in Cafe, we find fast implementation of uh, neural networks in C++ and mainly uh, it is focused on computer vision application. So as you can see, each having its own usage and own importance and own specific application. So if someone wants to use it in as a general purpose uh, software for um, understanding the neural networks and applying them, one can go for TensorFlow. If someone wants to do a very high level research or high level uh, um, development of the neural networks, they can use PyTorch. So in this way, there is a lot of uh, progress in a uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, lot of knowledge about these toolkits, which which is needed for uh, use before using them. Okay. So another thing is, uh, so you can see the uh, the this, uh, you can see from the screen uh, there is a um, there is a percentage of uh, uh, users of different toolkits uh, based on the learning curve, speed of development, sa size and passion of community, number of uh, papers implemented in framework, likelihood of long term growth and stability, ecosystem of tooling. So basically almost all the tools are uh, used uh, and uh, there is a very distinctive difference in the number of users and um, so the reason is basically it's not because one tool is better than the other only the thing is uh, as i said earlier based on the generality or the application of your problem um, so one one uses the uh, this sort of deep learning tool toolkits so you, you can see TensorFlow is commonly used. Uh, so next comes Keras, PyTorch, and Cafe, and Tiano, MXNet, uh, Deep, uh, and the Fast AI, Cafe2, Deep Learning4. So these uh, toolkits are also important, and they are having their own advantage. But these are only wor worked by the users who are developing or using for certain specific applications. So yeah. So it depends on the audience who are using and why they are using. It's for just for a learning purpose or just for learning on the basic academic projects. One can easily follow a TensorFlow um, and they can also do a deep learning um, uh, um, project in the TensorFlow. But you know it depends on the individual what uh, why they are using that and what is the purpose for that. There are another reason uh, for the advancements in AI uh, that is uh, because of the data which is available at hand. 
So we find data mainly through application generated data, user generated data, machine generated data. So in application generated data, we find the structured data like CI, like ERP from financial systems, documentations, presentations, emails, text strings. So in user generated data, we find web logs and click streams uh, from Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Salesforce. So we find a lot of uh, information, a lot of uh, user generated data uh, and emails, blogs, texting, chats, audio, video, images. So this is a very unstructured data basically. Uh, and we find uh, semi-structured data in the form of uh, uh, machine uh, like uh, machine generated data from sensors, uh, spatial data, scientific data, event data, basically messages uh, in real time and uh, so this is a semi structured data so we find we we find data in all sorts of formats whether it's a structured data in the form of uh, data coming from the financial systems where we have proper tables and records or we find uh, unstructured data where we have a uh, lot of emails lot of web logs and click streams social textual data uh, audio and video uh, video data we have images so this is all unstructured data and we also have machine generated data. So how we are able to deal with this data and how effectively we can analyze this one and make some predictions. So this is the main, uh, main, uh, main important uh, aspect. So uh, we will uh, look at uh, the human capabilities and uh, machine capabilities. So basically there is a very fundamental difference between how a, how a human learns over a period of time and uh, how a machine can perform some of the operations like here we can see on the screen uh, we can easily detect identify the people in the picture unless or until we know the person uh, so in the first picture you can see most of them are uh, popular actress and actors in the Hollywood industry in the second pick uh, you don't find uh, it's a random uh, people but at least you can say what kind of people they are and in the third we almost uh, don't have any idea only we can say these are the shadows of the people which are uh, uh, which is available um, so but when it comes to the other um, uh, in the second column you can see uh, calculate uh, if if a human um, if we perf if we give this task of per performing the summation of a large sets of numbers it is very difficult to, for him to do this operation it will take a couple of minutes or hours based on the intelligence of the human uh, so if it here it is a simple summation if you find if it if you make it as a multiplication it is even more difficult but the same task if it is given to the machine a machine perform this task much more easily and in a very short span of time but when this is the same task of identifying the people is given to the machine it can't do that so why it can't do that because it doesn't have any clue it doesn't have uh, information how to read this data Easy, uh, how to read this image uh, what sort of uh, information is there in the image how it can identify this information so there is a lot of um, uh, a lot of complexities involved in making the machine understand to perform some of the actions the human perform with very uh, with lot of ease okay so here in the right side of my screen you can see a human brain so generally a human brain consists of 100 billion neurons and 1000 trillion synapses and uh, a thalam thalmocortical system it has uh, 3 million neurons and 476 million synapses so here we are visualizing only 3% uh, of the neurons and 0.001% uh, of the synapses in the brain so very uh, a slight portion of the neurons are being used for some of our daily actions like um, you know in the vision or in a speaking or hearing or uh, you know some of the basic functions cognitive functions which we generally do so only very slight uh, amount of percentage of neurons we will use but here we can see how the neurons are being activated in the human brain so this this is just a snapshot of the human brain taken uh, when human brain is being performed uh, performing some uh, some function so uh, basically uh, these are the five cognitive uh, abilities a human has like uh, a vision um, hearing uh, uh, smell taste and touch 
so 50% of the neural uh, tissues of the brain are allotted to vision and 80% of the data in the world is represented in the form of pixels so we can say vision and speech are the killer apps of ai so basically based on these five cognitive abilities we make some decisions uh, and we make some based on the decision making uh, in our brain uh, we the brain generally does the decision making and based on that we make some action suppose we hear some sound of any animal uh, like a tiger or a lion or any um, any uh, when we go to any jungle or any park uh, so we generally um, after hearing the noise we will analyze what the sound is and based on that we make certain action um, by running away from there uh, so and finding the nearest place where we can be safe we feel safe so this sort of um, uh, uh, cognitive tasks not only that when we see certain image certain car coming towards us we make uh, immediate decision to move away from the uh, from the path of the car so that you know so this sort of actions uh, how we can do is because of the uh, because of the brain uh, able to pro you know, process this information and the eyes uh, basically we are able to visualize the uh, surroundings and maybe may uh, and able to understand the data which is there uh, in the surroundings like a car is approaching me so this sort of information uh, is being processed so in the in the in the context of uh, language we have speech recognition natural language generation speech generation natural language recognition so these are some of the cognitive tasks In natural language processing, we have language translation, uh, like in Grammarly.com, and uh, we have uh, some applications uh, like chatbots, personal assistants, and most of the companies are basically using this um, this personal assistants in order to endorse their products and uh, for uh, the for customer uh, care also for customer service also and uh, nlp is basically a branch of ai that deals with enabling the computers to read decipher understand and make sense of the human natural language so how we can effectively um, understand the human natural language and how we can basically provide uh, valuable suggestions or valuable additions to the um, uh, to the system so these sort of things uh, comes basically under the field of natural language processing and uh, based on these uh, fields uh, there are a lot of applications and we find uh, some of the nlp applications like chatbots machine translation uh, spam blocking uh, detecting the emotion information extraction question answering so we have a lot of uh, application uh, apps which are being developed in this context so another uh, kind of problems we will be dealing with is about the classification and retrieval of uh, images so in classification as you can see on the screen uh, so the which the algorithms uh, which we are developing which we will be developing they should be able to classify the images uh, and uh, it should be able to provide the information about the image uh, and uh, so this sort of operations are being done in this uh, field like vision another type of uh, problem which we will be dealing with will be object detection and segmentation where uh, you can see the environment is being segmented in different categories like building humans uh, bicycle uh, so in the top in the bottom picture you can see uh, how in vision uh, three different uh, ways uh, we will be uh, looking at classification of the images as a person sheep and dog or detection object detection um, and segmentation of the environment so these sort of operations are being done in the vision uh, field uh, another one is like image captioning here we have when an image is being fed it should be able to identify the image and it should be able to give the correct information about the image like a person riding a motorcycle on a dirt road so th there will be some uh, minor errors uh, but our algorithm should be able to provide uh, accurate information so that 
if if the if an image is being fed it should be able to identify these problems and solve them the another another major uh, application of ai is basically um, playing the games the computer play um, the computer playing the games against the human humans so you can see uh, this is one of the reasoning ability of a human which is being incorporated into the machines and uh, earlier it was very uh, it was far away approach for us uh, for humans to even think about um, uh, like machines is able to defeat a chess champion because we can never uh, it's, it's impossible to understand how it is possible because we humans as humans we think we are far more superior when it comes to machines but people started understanding how we can uh, apply this reasoning human reasoning into our machines and we will, we can make the machines more smarter and uh, fields like reinforcement learning uh, and uh, deep reinforcement learning q learning so these uh, fields actually help uh, um, help the machines to learn much faster and uh, they can process much faster analyze the moves much faster so you can see alphago uh, developed by deepmind it has bet um, um, lee sidol in this go the game of go which is a chinese checker game uh, very old uh, chinese checker game and um, so it's a it's a very phenomenal feat because it's impossible to understand uh, the amount of uh, process which uh, happens every second every every move and uh, in the third uh, so you can see a, the computer has won against uh, the world chess champion gary kasparov in 1997 so this is another tremendous feat by deep blue uh, so so there is a lot of uh, progress which is done in the form of re, uh, incorporating the reasoning into the machines so the major application of uh, ai right uh, right now is in the apply in the um, in the functioning of the self driving cars so you can see there are a lot of uh, challenges also involved so as a car moves it should be able to un uh, dynamically understand the environment it should be dynamically able to segregate the environment and make uh, conscious decisions uh, so it's quite complex in order to understand so a lot of fields are involved along with this one so what do you mean by intelligent so uh, how we can judge whether the ai is intelligent and uh, what do you say when we uh, when we uh, when we speak that someone is intelligent so there are two important things we always uh, look for whether it is well informed well um, well informed and another one is whether it makes any um, good judgment so in both cases uh, we can see it's not up to the mark but uh, there are some edge cases as you can see on the screen there is a google self driving car crashing into a bus and uh, we can say that it's not a well informed uh, um, but and not sound in judgment Uh, but there is a lot of data is being collected and lot of improvements are being done so it's still work in progress we can't discard uh, the ai application of uh, self driving car um, but a uh, lot of research should be done lot of work should be done and people are um, able to overcome these uh, troubles so some of the major applications uh, of ai research are by facebook and amazon so in facebook has invested lot of money into this ai research so they have two main products like uh, facebook deep face and facebook deep text so in facebook deep uh, deep uh, face uh, it is a, it's a basically a facial recognition system and it identifies human faces in digital images and it is trained with 4 million facebook images the system is 97% accurate and uh, it's being developed by facebook ai research so as you can see uh, there is a lot of progress in ai research uh, in when it comes to facebook and uh, they should uh, it's very important application also because a lot of people uh, do follow facebook and uh, um, it's very uh, um, i mean it it should be very genuine the images which are being uploaded and uh, uh, yeah and another one is uh, the facebook uh, deep text where the deep learning based text understanding engine understands the content 
like several thousand posts per second and uh, it's spanning over 20 different languages so we find it's a very uh, important application also because whenever uh, we find a text based on the facebook text a lot of influences uh, social media or a political media or, so a lot of influences can be drawn from a facebook te facebook post so one should be the the platform should be able to analyze this uh, text and they should be able to uh, say whether it's uh, the sensitive or non sensitive and uh, so these sort of things are required uh, in a longer uh, a longer time in order to make conscious decisions for a smooth running of a society so the another one is by amazon uh, it's called amazon go so where uh, the amazon technology um, helps the uh, the, uh, the store in order to make uh, uh, intelligent decisions like it can identify uh, what what product has been taken uh, when it has been removed or added and uh, uh, how it can be uh, replaced or like when it has to be replaced and uh, so based on the vision weight and the stock location data to make guest, uh, best guess of what items can be added or removed and uh, some of the sensors like weight sensors will be able to detect the weight of the items removed or added and uh, this data is basically fed into the ai system and uh, the amazon go app in the shopper's mobile device will be communicating with the store's uh, network and uh, it can identify the mobile device of the shelf so this is all integrated with um, like the platforms are integrated so basically this is a smart system where if a product is being removed from the shelf or if uh, something um, uh, like something needs to be replenished so these sort of operations can be done automatically rather than uh, it takes a day or two to uh, upload the things or uh, replenish the things so in this way they can enhance the customer uh, service customer satisfaction and uh, they can improve their products based on like how much what are the products which are being uh, sold uh, on a frequent basis uh, and uh, what what are the products which are uh, need to be um, uh, looked for in order to endorse them so these sort of things like uh, you know there are a lot of applications because of this technology so one can get a real time data based on this application and uh, yeah so thank you so these are just few some of the uh, ai use cases and uh, we have looked at uh, the introductory part of ai and how it is different from machine learning and uh, um, and deep learning and what is deep learning a brief view of deep learning and uh, we looked at uh, some of the aspects of uh, uh, human intelligence and machine intelligence and how the cognitive abilities help us to make conscious decisions and uh, we were able to uh, make uh, some of the uh, apps based on this uh, human intelligence like when it comes to um, speech or vision or uh, reasoning of a human brain so a lot of companies are investing a lot of um, uh, time and money into this ai research in order to make uh, make them more and more better and uh, intelligent and make good judgment Thank you.